Have you thought about making your own beer or have tried and failed? Come along with me and I'll show you how to make a successful batch each and every time, quick and easy. Let's go. Hi, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back to the channel. 14 years ago, my wife bought me, as a present, a Cooper's Brewery kit, and this particular one had a lager in it. Um, I wasn't too fussed on the present, I've got to be honest, but I, still, I gave it a shot, and to my surprise, I found out how easy it was to do, and how great the beer tasted. And so it wasn't long before it became very popular amongst my family and friends. And so I started brewing more and more. And I tried different type of Cooper's beers, but the ones that I liked the most was the lager and the pale ale. And so I did have some failures, and it's when I didn't stick to the recipe or I didn't understand the recipe. So I'd like to share with you uh, my successes and uh, show you step by step how to do it. This is the fermenter I'm gonna be using. I've actually got two types, and this is the older version, but for demonstration purposes, this one's gonna suit better. So before I start the homebrew, uh, first I need to sanitize the container. And uh, Coopers actually have their own sanitizer brand, but they no longer sell it through the local distributors, which I usually get from either Woolworths or Big W. I'm using the Brigolo homebrew sanitizer instead. Okay, so I'll also put the stirring spoon in there and sanitize that at the same time. Okay, so we've given plenty of time for the sanitizer to do its work. And so now it's time to empty out the water in this container in the, from the fermenter into the bottles that we'll be using to bottle the beer later on. So we need to sanitize everything. And so we also have sanitized the hydrometer, which we'll be testing later, recording a measurement so we know how much alcohol is actually in this beer. I usually brew uh, either Cooper's Lager or Cooper's Pale Ale, but I'm gonna try for the first time Cooper's Real Ale. Now apparently it's a little bit bitter, and uh, which um, I'm okay with. I do prefer a lager, a sweeter beer, but I'm gonna give this a shot. Uh, we have State of Origin and Movie Guys. It'll be interesting to see what they think of this beer in months to come. With the syrup that gives a taste to the beer, um, you need to put that in hot water uh, and let the, uh, the syrup soften because it won't come out of the container uh, easily unless you do that. So what I do is I boil water and put it in the sink and let it sit for a period of time. And while I'm letting it sit, I'm actually bottling the sanitized water into the bottles at the same time. Okay, so this thing is called a little bottler. And so it has a little valve on the bottom. This is pushed up, so you push this up, the bottle up against the base, and the fluid comes through there and it just gravity fed into the bottle. We squeeze it in, it's a very tight fit. We grab a bottle and place it under the little bottler and just slowly touch the base. And you'll see it'll start to spurt out with water. Once you turn the tap on, that is, and you'll hear it straight away. And this water I keep in just until I bottle and then I wash them out. You do need to put a towel down because it can get a little wet. So generally speaking, it takes me roughly about 35 minutes to, uh, to set up a brew. So 23 litres will usually give you around um, 32 bottles. Um, so that equates roughly to two and a half cartons of beer. Now considering the cost factor of uh, buying the ingredients, which is anywhere from 28 to $30, depending on where you buy it from, um, and comparing it to the quality of Cooper's beer and how much it costs per, per carton, that's a big saving. So with my beer, I allow it to ferment for, or sit, I should say, um, I ferment for eight days, but I let it sit for two and a half months. Now, you can actually drink beer 
14 days after it's bottled. So around about the 23rd day. Um, but I found that the beer always tastes green. Uh, green meaning fresh. Uh, probably not ripe, not ready. Um, yeah, so I would definitely give it two and a half months for any beer. And so Cooper's is an Australian company based in South Australia, uh, where my wife was born actually. So, um, and they're very unique. They do the homebrew kits, but they're also very popular for their beer. Very nice tasting beer. And their beer is MGO free. So genetically modified organism free. So their beers you'll find, or most beers you'll find, have a use by date or best before. With the Cooper's beer is actually, in some cases, best after. So now we're finished and the boxes are full and we'll put them away uh, and ready for bottling in eight days. Uh, now before we start the process of uh, putting the syrup and the water and all the ingredients, uh, we need to wash this out in hot water. So we need two litres of water in preparation of putting the syrup in. Now I'll just take the can out of the hot water. So this beer looks quite dark actually, compared to others. Okay, so I'll leave that partially, the lid partially on and I'll carry it with a tea towel. So now I'll pour the water into the fermenter and I won't pour all of it in and I'll show you why in a moment. The syrup is quite dark and it's actually quite runny, which is good. All right, so you tip it in. So what I do now, with the remainder of the water, I tip it in the tin just so I can get all of that ingredients. I'm not gonna put it all in yet, but I'm just gonna give it a bit of a stir. And so just washing down those walls. And so that will take out a crucial amount that would never have been used if I didn't do that. So you need to use the whole two liters of hot water. So I get every bit of it out that I can. Now we'll use our spoon. Just stir that around a little. While the water is really hot, you need to dilute the sugar. So we use the number two enhancer and we put it in very slowly. If you put it in one go, you'll find that it's gonna clog up and they're just gonna to stick together. You've really got to do this slowly. My experience tells me don't rush this. So just a little bit at a time while you stir. And you can see that just nicely coming in while I'm stirring. Look at that, very nice and gentle. Okay, so that's it there. So the last thing you put in is the yeast, the very last thing. So you don't put it in until you've done your testing of your hydrometer. Using a very clean um, pot or container, uh, remembering you don't want soap in it. So you've got to make sure that you wash it down in hot water. I've got six litres in this eight litre tub. I don't overfill it on purpose because it's so easy to spill water over the edge. And all I do is tip this tap water directly into the fermenter. So we'll stop at around 20 litres, just check the temperature and see if we need to add some hot water. I like the temperature to sit at around about 23, 22 when I first start fermenting. So over the next couple of days, as the yeast starts to consume the sugar, the temperature will rise because of the activity. But then after about four days, it will then cool down again. So if the temperature drops below 21, that's not a good thing. The, the most optimal time of year to brew is in the uh, mid-season. So we're coming to a mid-season, but we're not exactly there yet. Okay, so that's raised the temperature back up again. Okay, so I'm getting close to the mark and that's where I want to be. I'm going to put this hydrometer in. 
into the fermenter and just see where it, where it sits. It was sitting on 35. And so what we'll do, we'll record that measurement. And when we're finished fermenting, we'll take another reading and the difference will show us how much the alcohol content is. Now we'll just cut open the yeast packet and then we'll just spread it around the top. Just give it a bit of a stir, not too much. So now what we need to do is close the lid and close it pretty tight because we've got to trap the air in. We've got to trap it in really tight. So this little device here is going to restrict the air from coming out. There is a little hole on top with a rubber grommet around it. So I just put some water in there. You can see the water's around about halfway. The temperature is now sitting on roughly 24 degree, maybe 25. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. We have an air conditioner going at the moment. Uh, when we turn that off, this temperature will drop a little bit, but uh, I don't expect it to drop too much. If it sat on around 23 for the next six days, I'd be quite happy. Um, but I do have a bl blanket ready to put over it if we need it. So it's the second day. It's around about 24 hours since I've put the brew together. And now I can show you why I chose this fermenter. So the breather, which is on top here, uh, you saw where I filled it around about halfway. Well, now the pressure of the yeast consuming the sugar is causing the air to push outwards, but we don't want oxygen to get back in. So this breather pushes air through and the water it bubbles up. And as it bubbles, it doesn't allow water, air to come back in. Coopers have a new type of fermenter where They've got two pieces of plastic that come into each other and the water level, the 23 litre, is higher than where the covers overlap so the oxygen can't get through. So this will start bubbling up roughly around about 12 hours after you've put all the ingredients together and closed it off. It's now the eighth day and the beer is ready to be bottled. So the temperature did drop a little bit over the last couple of days, but by putting a blanket on top, I was able to maintain the temperature around about 22, 23 degree, and I'm confident that this beer is gonna be fine. So before I started, uh, I've actually washed out the bottles uh, and rinsed them in hot water and taken all the sanitizer out. And so they're ready to go. And I've also labeled the box uh, with the type of beer that I've brewed and the date. Also check with the hydrometer what the gravity level is. So we'll take the lid off. There we go. Wow, that beer smells very nice. The reading last time was at 35, so that's 1,035. We'll just see now what the gravity level is. So the hydrometer was hovering around about the 1.000 uh, area. Um, so that means that the uh, alcohol content uh, is just below 5% and I'm happy with that. Now I'll just get the uh, carbonated drops ready. So we put two carbonated drops in per bottle. So I'll just put the little bottler in now. Okay, open the tap. And we're ready to go. So it's very crucial when you're bottling the beer that you uh, are very efficient in the way you're handling your bottles. So as it gets close to the top, you've got to have another bottle ready because you don't want any of the beer to drip on the ground. Now the first couple you do will throff up and won't fill up all the, to the top. So I generally just leave them on the side for a minute and that throff will go down. And when you get to about the sixth or seventh bottle, it won't throff up as much. The throff has come down on most of them, so I'll just go now through and just fill them up. All I do now is just drop in two carbonated drops, close the lid, and I close it as tight as I can because there's a lot of pressure that's gonna build up in this bottle in the next couple of months. And you don't want that pressure to go out because the beer will go flat, it's worthless.
Okay, so that's the final amount. So around 32 bottles, just under. Another successful batch. I was just thinking over the last 14 years, I would have brewed roughly about 60 batches of different type of Cooper's beers and had a lot of success. But I learned a lot on the way as well. It is easy, very simple to make the Cooper's beer, as long as you stick to the recipe. Um, and saying that, I do have a friend of mine named Bill West, and he makes his own boutique beer from scratch. And wow, what an incredible tasting beer he makes. And I'd like to get a video with him in the future, if possible. So anyway, that's the end of this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, I hope you got something out of it. And please drink responsibly. If you do enjoy the video, I'd ask if you'd subscribe and uh, please hit the like button. And I'll see you on the next video.